coming back out of the break. The Evansville Purple Aces 16, the Ball State Cardinals 10. Is, uh, again, these two teams are very familiar with each other as they played twice last year with a home and a home slate last season, splitting those two games, and then they meet up here once again. And you take a look there, Evansville has really had the advantage when they played Ball State here in Evansville. Yeah, Evansville, I was here for this game and called the game last year. They got off to a slow start, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure that Coach McCarty is much happier with the start this year. They got down by 17, made a comeback, ended up winning by double figures. So once they got rolling, uh, it was easy for them to put points on the board. But these two teams do know each other very well. I think that's why you see them getting up and down and uh, getting up some shots early because they both want to play with pace. And so this is a, definitely a, a game that you would like to see. Hopefully there's a lot of points on the board. And that game last season, especially here at the Ford Center, Evansville held Ball State to 19% from three in the home win. And then erupted, as you mentioned, on that comeback effort, a 44-11 run. And Really, like you said, it was mostly that second half where Evansville just found that spark in that game last season. Last year, and I have, you know, obviously we're at the start of this year, but last year, if Evansville got up and down and played in transition, they were really hard to beat. They scored, they scored easily. It's when teams got back and kind of stopped them in transition and made them play half-court offense. And what Ball State did was they allowed Evansville to get going in the transition. The crowd got into it, and then they were able to start making shots, and it just got out of hand for them. Despite being within the same state as Frederick Green takes a three, bounces off the rim. You and Evansville and Ball State only played each other three times in the previous 48 years before these last three matchups. Scramble for and T comes up with it, goes right at the basket. Offensive foul, Frederick Keen taking the charge. I love to see that. That's the second charge tonight. And I can tell you what, anybody who hasn't played basketball charges, my coach always said, Coach Cruz, charges is the most unselfish play in the game because you're giving up your body, you, you make the other team get a foul, and it gets your team rallied up and, and shows that you are there for your teammates. So Evansville and Coach McCarty has to be happy to see that the team out there giving up themselves to, to get good defensive stops. It's just one of those small things where you can amp the energy levels up for your team and, and Credit to Frederick King for being there and getting set in time as Williams. He continues to have a solid first half. Another bucket for him, and he's in double figures. He's taking it right at Teague right now. He went right into his chest, right into his chin. That's what he has to do. Teague is going to have to muscle him up a little bit more and not let him get such great position. Williams, four or five from the four to start. Bumbleo for three, switches it through. Had a nice little follow through as well. I've been excited to see this kid play. He was a Mr. Basketball finalist in Indiana, and me being an Indiana purist, if you're a Mr. Basketball finalist, I know you can play and I know you can put the ball in the basket. But this kid being a freshman, I, and I see that shot, lets me know that he's going to be a good player here and he's not afraid to put the ball up. As Bumbleo, the freshman out of Newcastle, Indiana, the second leading scorer in, school, in Newcastle history behind the one and only Steve Alford, 1,717 points. So. If you're right behind that name, you can shoot the basketball. That lets you know right there how good this kid is. If you're right behind Steve, if you're in the same breath as Steve Alford in high school basketball in Indiana, you can play ball at a high level. We approach nine minutes left here in the first half. Evansville up 22-13. Ball State looking to get into a rhythm here. As Coach James Whitford in his seventh season hollering instructions from the far sideline. T trying to Use his strength to put one up. Leaves it short. Evansville in transition. And Alta set it up in the half court. Newton pulls up. About 12 feet out, can't get it to fall. And they're hoping his offensive game will take a step up this year as he was known as a really good defender last season in his first year with Evansville. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody wants to improve all facets of their game over the summer. You know, but what he does do, he does bring a lot of great energy defensively, puts pressure on the ball, and sometimes that's just your role and what your team needs you to do. Hazen. And that's Hazen with the basket. And that'll take us to a media timeout. And it was up by seven here on the Valley on ESPN. Now the timeout, Riley banks it in. 34-16 Evansville. So we wind down to the last couple minutes of the opening half. Again, with McCarty playing, uh, coaching under Brad Stevens, who is one of the best ATO guys in the NBA, whenever there's a timeout, he's going to come out with something very strategic to get the shot that he wants. He got K.J. Riley posted up, one-on-one -on -one in the post, exactly what he wanted right there. 
And you take a look at both head coaches, they both bring quite impressive res resumes for Walter McCarty. Of course, played 10 years in the NBA. You mentioned was under the, the helm of Brad Stevens with the Boston Celtics. Of course, when he played at Kentucky, Rick Pitino was the head coach for Ball State. And talking about James Whitford, he spent 11 years at, as an assistant at Miami, Ohio, four years at Xavier, and then four more at Arizona before taking the job here and now in his seventh season. His coaching credibility can't be disputed, and so it's just good to see good coaches going against each other like this. And It's a chess match and see who, who can get the shot they want when they want it. As we talked about the turnover and a lot of new faces for Evansville this year, and you saw that stat, the newcomers contributing quite a bit to the Evansville offense so far, 23 of the 34 points. Wow, that's awesome to see. You know, Coach has to be happy to see the guys coming in. This is their first game. You never know how someone's going to respond with first game jitters, but it looks like these guys came ready to play. There's a shot clock down to five. Givens, long three from Williams, gets it to go. As he is having quite the first half, Lubinowitz gets the poke. He'll take it the other way, lays it up, can't finish. And good sportsmanship there by Williams to help his counterpart to his feet. And you know, for, for, for Williams uh, and for Coach Whitford, it's going to have to be a priority to get Williams under control. He's on pace for a 30-point night tonight. He's doing it in all types of ways. He's shooting. He's shooting the three. He's posting up. He's getting offensive rebounds. He's doing anything he wants. So someone's going to have to get him out of rhythm. Otherwise, the Cardinals don't stand a chance to win this game. As Williams averaged 24 points per game and 11 rebounds per game in 2017-18 for the Nationwide Academy in Oklahoma City. Was also chosen to play in the NBA Top 100 camp in the summer of 2015. So his playing resume is also very impressive, and it's starting to show these Evansville fans why he has that resume. As you mentioned, on pace for a 30-point game. Evansville slowing it down a little bit here. It's under mid to play, Cunliffe. Overshoots the basket there. You know, with, with, with Cunliffe, I think that there's a lot of expectations for him. He was a top 100 kid, played at Arizona State, played at Kansas. And then for the University of Evansville to get a transfer from Kansas raised a lot of eyebrows. And people saw that Coach McCarty was here. He was here for business. He was going to try to bring in talent. I think Cunliffe wants to put a, he puts a lot of pressure on himself to play well. He just has to let the game come to him. And I think he'll be just fine. The, his talent speaks for itself. As Mallers picked up the last bucket there, for ball seat. Shot clock off, five seconds. Givens, he'll take the three shot and train it. And that will be the halftime horn. Evansville with a ton of confidence going into the halftime locker room. You could have asked for a better half for Evansville if you're an Aces fan to see them put up 40 points. Another thing that I know that Coach McCarty's going to drill in is, yes, we scored 40, but we held them to 18. Continue playing defense, getting back on defense, keep, ties, keep Teague in check, and it's going, to be a, it's going to be a long day for the Cardinals. Halftime from the fourth center. Evansville leads 40-18. We'll have more when we come back on the Valley on ESPN. Coming out of the break, SMU 33, Evansville 30. We thank you for joining us here tonight on the Valley on ESPN. Marcus Wilson, Preston Leinenbach here with you on the call. And most of the first half was highlighted for SMU by Ethan Shagwa, who, no surprise, can't put up big numbers, averaged 12 and 6 last season. But Tyson Jolly, again, had foul trouble in the first half, making some big plays here, as well as Ferran Hunt in the second half. Uh, he's a bucket getter. We knew that he, we knew that he could score coming in, averaging 19.3 points a game and six rebounds. So he just was really hindered in the first half by those two fouls. He's the type of guy that once a couple starts going down, he's going to keep shooting. So Evansville needs to slow him down right now so he doesn't get into a rhythm. Evansville with the basketball out of the timeout. Williams catches it near the elbow. It's tipped out of bounds. It's going to go off of Williams and to SMU. And the story behind Jolly spent his freshman season at Baylor, his sophomore season at Trinity Valley Community College. But going back to his high school days, he had to deal with some health issues 
and with blood clots near his lungs, and he's come back and had a successful basketball career at the collegiate level, and that's and that's big time right there to come back for something like that. That's admirable right there. You know, you, you really root for a kid that goes through those type of health problems and can fight through it and still come out and, and live his college, live his dreams to play college basketball. You just have nothing but respect for a kid like that to come back, and it's great to see him out here competing at a high level. And at such a young age, that can be such a scary thing to hear. And now, really, at any age, we remember a couple years ago when the best of women's tennis player, Serena Williams, had to miss some time with blood clots as well and able to bounce back and continue her tennis career in a strong way. Five minutes have elapsed here in the second half. Frederick Green tries to get it to Williams, but whistled off. This will be a foul against SMU, looks like. Looks like the call will go against Mike. So for Mike, that's three fouls, as well as C.J. White with three fouls in terms of foul trouble for SMU. As the head coach Tim Jankovic talking to one of our officials. You see there the head coach Tim Jankovic his fourth season at the helm of SMU, the former Illinois State head coach, if that name sounds familiar to the Missouri Valley Conference fans. Led the Redbirds from 2007 to 2012 before moving on and Dan Moeller taking over for Illinois State. SMU switching these handoffs is, is really bothering the Aces. They're not getting the angles that they want and they're keeping the ball outside of the three-point line. Evansville's gonna have to find a way to start getting some angles to the basket and really challenging the rotations of SMU because handing the ball out, out handing the ball off outside the three-point line is not gonna be effective. Riley was wide open, but bounces it off the left side of the rim. Jolly comes over for the strong side rebound. Jolly waiting for a pick from Shagwa. Now he'll get the switch against Hall, takes it. Ball batted around and eventually scooped up and collected by Williams. Puts his head down to the basket. Bingo rolls it in. Great move there by the big man. Like I said, when you got a 6'8 guy who can get a rebound and get to the basket, the full length of the court, that's really hard to defend because most bigs cannot stop the ball. So then that means you have to have a guard stop the ball, which will create mismatches in other areas of the court. Evansville back with him. One of you saw another look there with that take by Williams. Evansville bringing Cunliffe and Labinowitz back in. These two guys are combined. Two for ten. Evansville needs them to put some, put some, uh, start putting some baskets together out of those guys to open it up and create some more easy baskets for for DeAndre Williams. As Jolly able to somehow pull that one down on a high pass and gets the reverse to go. But you mentioned the two subs coming in for Evansville, and for Evansville, that's one thing they mentioned that a plus for them this season is their depth. Not a single player playing more than 30 minutes this year, and multiple guys playing in that 20-minute range. Yeah, that, that's good for the longevity of the season. Hopefully you, you don't have guys getting too tired again. But with Evansville, outside of DeAndre Williams, who is going to be able to get baskets when they need it? Shagwa from way downtown. And it's good. Ethan Shagwa into double figures. SMU with six point advantage over Evansville. Shagwa is really playing a tough game right now. As Labinowitz gets fouled and shakes his head as he feel like he should have got me a basket and one if he could have completed the layup. You know, speaking of layups, I was talking to one of my former teammates at halftime, and he pointed out Evansville was down four, and we probably counted four missed layups. And then you had to travel by DeAndre were, uh, in, in transition. So at the end of the game when it's tight and people start saying, okay, this is the mistake they made, this is the mistake they made. Coaches and players and, and people who, who know the game know that it's a, a, a culmination of things. And so even though Labinowitz got fouled right there, I think that was, it was he was very capable to make that. So Evansville just has to start making the easy baskets, and I think they'll be just fine. 
Benoist with one more at the line. Swishes it through the bottom of the net. And that's one thing that...